Hey folks, it is the first of 2023 and we got exciting new products we want to talk about today and that's what it's all about. Some new products for 2023. Welcome to the Road by Road Gardening Show, the best dead gum gardening show on the internet where we talk about gardening, a little bit of cooking, and growing your own food. Now sit back and enjoy. Hey folks, I'm Greg. I'm Sheila. And in case you didn't know, this is our weekly Row by Row Garden Show. It comes on every Thursday night, Facebook and YouTube, and we're all things gardening, growing your own food. We own a business here in South Georgia. We sell garden tools, supplies, and seeds. Everything you need to successfully grow your own food, and we're glad you have joined us this evening. And we got a lot of stuff going on. It's January, but man, I'm tired already. I know, but next week will be February. I know, tater time. Tater time. So we are busy, busy, busy. Uh, it's that time of year for us. Everything's kicked off a little bit. You know, first part of January was just a little bit slow than normal. I give that to the weather. The weather's changed. Mm -hmm. It was nasty got, last weekend. Yeah, everybody's got gardening on the mind now, so mm -hmm. we've been real busy trying to get these seeds and tools out to you. Orders have been piling in, and we do appreciate it. So... Uh, one of the things that we do around here is we listen to you guys and we've listened to you and what you needed that we didn't have and that's where we base our new products on we got a couple of them today that i've been working on for about eight months now yeah eight months if not longer yeah so we're going to talk about that but first of all let's talk about what's 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 happening right now right now jimmy I, red corn seeds in yeah and uh made some grits and cornbread mm -hmm. last week we just got a fresh shipment of our jimmy red corn seed in from the 2022 crop and uh it's been flying off the shelf if you have never grown jimmy red corn before you need to put it on your bucket list to do mm -hmm. also we got potatoes that we're still shipping out we're getting another shipment in around the first of february mm -hmm. And we will be shipping more taters out in February. Right. So you, if you live in Florida, Louisiana, and you ordered some Red Norlands, we're having to hold those back about a week to get mm -hmm. the next ship shipment in. Yep. Anything else we've got in stock and we're getting it out, but we'll get all potatoes out to you in time. We're going to start probably around February 10th just blasting those taters out because you guys is on eight. I want to watch y'all's by Valentine's Day, so we'll have them to you by then. And if you get them and you don't have your place ready, that's been a big question this yeah, week. Yeah, just lay them out in a cool, dry place and just let them be. They'll be fine. They'll sprout a little bit, and that's all right. You can cut them up. Do they need to be in a paper bag? That's another question. I don't, to me, it doesn't matter. I mean, some people put it in a paper bag and seal it up. But I, I, I've never done that. Basically, store them like any potatoes you can exactly, buy. Exactly, exactly, like that. And then uh, you'll be ready. And another thing, too, a lot of people complain of what they ain't got no sprouts on them. No eyes. Well, I planted before without eyes. The eyes are there, you just can't see them. But if you want them to sprout, place them out somewhere and give them a few days, and they'll sprout right out, and you'll know exactly where your eyes is at. Now, another thing, I like to cut mine up a few days before I plant them and let them heal over. So we just cut them up. Spread them out, and they'll be fine. A little cool, dry place. That's the key. called what? Chitting. Chitting. Chitting is when you spread them out there and you let them spread out. You have problems with that word sometimes. I do. It's got me in trouble sometimes. Couple of things while we're on the subject. We have been working on two special projects, mm -hmm. and that is for coming up this spring. Is we're going to have sweet potato slips for sale come April the 15th. We'll have them on our site before then, so you can sign up for them. You might could even buy them. We ain't got all the details worked out yet, but they will be available to start shipping April the 15th. Now, you guys, normally I don't plant mine quite early. I plant mine in May, but if you wanted to plant them that early, you can. I like to plant mine about the, the between the May 15th and 30th, 1st of June, somewhere is when I like to plant After you dig your others up? Yeah, after I dig my others up. That's just me. So we have that. Another thing, too, is we've been working on a plant program for a long, long time, and we're going to have some plants available this spring. We're going to have some brassicas available um, probably around the end of February, and we're going to have some tomatoes and peppers. So we'll be shipping plants. Plants, yep. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll have tomatoes. 
have some of the oscillators I hope ready. We have some of the red snappers. We're gonna have some of the Shelby's. So we'll have that later on in the springtime, probably sometime in March. So we'll have. You have any idea like the packaging yet? No. Yeah, well, what, what they're gonna do, they're gonna be in plugs. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull those plugs out and we're gonna bundle them with a rubber band and that's the way we're gonna send them out. In sets of six, 12? Uh, the, I'm glad you asked that question mm -hmm. and uh, you're fixing to get me here now. But the brassicas this are going to be still in, in the planning phase. Yeah, the brassicas are going to be in the 20 bundle stage. The peppers are going to be in 10 bundles, and the tomatoes are going to be in 20 bundles. Mm. Mm. You know, is that sharp? Did you? All right. So let's talk about first new product for 2023, and then we're not talking about seeds. We're talking about hard goods. Let's talk about. The, well, let's talk about the first of all, let me get my notes in order here. Let's talk about the small irrigation kit. Now, we already have this on our website. Mm -hmm. Here's this, the way this product came about. A lot of people out there wanted a, to go to drip irrigation, but they didn't need our 8 mil or our 15 mil irrigation kit because it consists of 1,500 square foot of tape. Too big. Too, too, much. too much. And you think about it, I can... With our eight mil kit, I can buy that kit and I got enough tape to last me for two seasons or almost a year and a half. And I do a lot of gardening. So I get that, understand that. So what we did is, is we put together a small irrigation kit for people that have smaller gardens to give them the opportunity to use drip irrigation. They can also use the fertilizer injector and inject their fertilizer through there using a smaller system. How about that? Another thing too is this system here can last you a long, long time. There's no disposables in this system. Once you put it together and you use it, you just pull it out of the way. Roll work, it back up. You can't really roll it back up. You but just you kind of move it, it out of the way. Uh, and then you work your soil up, put the irrigation system back in so place. So it goes on top of the soil. It goes on top of the soil. You don't bury this one. Okay. You can, but I don't really recommend it if you're going to be moving it back and forth. All right, so let's dig into it. Small irrigation kit, and here's the box, folks. Comes in a box just like this right here. And I'm gonna get some of this out of the way so we can see. No, we're just gonna show the product page. Yep, we're gonna show the product page where we got our small drip irrigation kit there. And you look at there, folks, and see what comes with the set. And I'm gonna lay it out right here. So overall, why would you want to use a drip? You don't want to use drip because you use a lot less water. You put the water right where it needs to be on the plant. And you can also inject your fertility or your fertilizer into the drip so you don't waste any fertilizer whatsoever. And you're not watering or fertilizing your weeds, but you're just doing your plants. One of the questions we get often, or I get, because I do most of the YouTube comments, is how is your garden so weed free? And one reason is because we and use drip irrigation. Them, it's drip irrigation and we're not watering the weeds. That's right. We're watering the plants. And you know, water's become a, a very precious commodity. So we don't want to waste any water whatsoever. And it's expensive, especially mm -hmm. people that's on some of these. Uh, it systems. also helps reduce the disease pressure and pest pressure because you're not getting all the water on the leaves. Especially powder and downy mildew. So with Cucurbits, we have diseases called powder and down the mildew, which is probably our biggest problem as far as diseases, you know, and it's caused by a lot of times leaf wetness. So when you get that wetness off from that leaf, you help control that disease by putting that water underneath the plant instead of on the leaf here. Somebody's gonna ask what kind of knife you have. That's a bench made knife. Yeah, how I get that? that every show. Yep, I love my little bench made knife. I don't know who wrapped all this up, but they did a wonderful <laughs> job. I think that was Miss Francis. Miss Francis does a good job. She takes her job seriously. Well, all right. Boom. Boom. Okay, so the first thing you get is a filter regulator combo. Now, if you're familiar with our other irrigation systems, you get the same thing with that. There's one exception. This is a little bit different. But here we have the, the uh, hose connector right there, and that hooks into any water speaker or water hose. So you take your water hose and hook it right into that. That's a swivel there. And some people complain about these things leaking right there. And the reason they leak is because you don't get it tight. You have to get this tight on there for it to seal up there. 
And then behind that, we have a filter. We like to use a filter because it keeps all the trash out of our drip irrigation from it getting stopped up there. So we have this nice yellow filter that you can take out and clean periodically. If you have a lot of an uh, old water system, you may have a lot of rust in your lines, or if you have a well, you may have rust in your lines if you got steel casing. So that helps tra trap a lot of those contaminants. When you leave there, that is when you get to the pressure regulator. And your PSI should be 50. Or Eight. less, or less. Now, this particular one is a 20 PSI, where the one for our other drip systems or is a 12 PSI. So this reduces your pressure down to 20 PSI going into this drip system here because this drip system right here can tolerate higher pressures than our drip irrigation tape can. Really? As long yes. as, even though it's smaller? It's the same size. No, it's, I'm trying. Yep, even though it's smaller. The fittings and everything is different on that. So you got 20 PSI pressure regulator. You come out of that with this right here, and this goes directly onto your mainline tubing right there. Mm -hmm. So in this kit, you get 30 feet of mainline tubing. Now I'm gonna go ahead and hook this up right here. You simply, and then we would put this on the end. Whoa. Whoa. Push it on there, kind of wiggle it a little bit. And then you just move that down, twist it on there, and you got it. So 30 foot would allow you to do how many rows? It's cool how far your rows are. Typical row spacing. Well, let's just say 36 inches. So you did 10 three foot row spacing, 10 rows at 36 inch. That would afford you to do 10 rows, right? Okay. In the kit, you will get a hole punch and some fittings in there. Now the difference with our eight mil kits, we like to put this filter regulator in the middle and use a T, but with this system right here, and we can throw that map up. No, that's not, mm -hmm. we don't have a map for this one, but let me just kind of tell people how it works. So you would lay this out as a lateral line. You would put this on the end of your line. Y'all just bear with me and just imagine here that this thing's 30 Love feet it. long. Slide it on a little bit further, I can't get over. I can't get over, okay. put it back in. I think. Yeah. I had never done this. I know you're learning like everybody else. Ta da! Ta da! All right, so just imagine that this line here is 30 feet long. Then you could come in here with your hole punch here and you're going to punch holes. Now let's go ahead and punch one in here. You're going to punch holes in here wherever you want those rows at. So you take this, just push it, and twist it. Did you hear that pop? Oh, yeah. Let me see if I can do it. So you would measure? Measure over to where you want your next row at. Twist and push. Yep. Ah, okay. All right, so we have two different products right here that look exactly the same. We have a transfer barb and we have a goof plug. And both of them look exactly the same. The difference is the transfer barb, as you can see all the way through it, you can blow through Like a whistle? It, like a whistle. So it goes all the way through. The goof plug does not. Try to blow it in. You can't blow it to stop it. <laughs> <laughs> so this is your transfer barb. This is what you pop into your tubing right here. And it just pops right in. It's got that little boom. Did you hear that? Boom. Put your tra is a transfer barb or goof plug? I see all the way through. It's a transfer barb. Wait, wait. Yeah. Are both ends exactly the same? Both ends of what? This transfer bar. Yeah, both ends are exactly the same, so it don't matter which side you put in there. All right, so we've got that. So I'm going to open up one of these with that fancy knife I got. So oh. the goof plugs is if you goof up and you need no to ma stop at the hole? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. sounded good. It is on our other kits, it is for that, but on this kit, it works differently. Now you could. You're right, you could, if you goofed up and punched the wrong hole there, you could use the goof plug. Okay. But what these goof plugs are used for in this kit is to stop up the end of this line oh, to put okay. on your end. So, let's just cut this off right here. You gotta cut me one too then. There's you one.
And here's me one. So we would take this tubing and then you're just going to push it on there. Love that right there. Got it? Like that. Yep. Look at you. Ooh. Oh, you like over did it. All right. So this right here is your tubing, and inside, if you can see these little swell points, points here, that's your emitters that is built into this oh, drop drip line. A little swelling. Mm -hmm. there. Now that right there drips out water at 0.5 gallons per hour. Okay. They're six inches apart. So every six inches you have an emitter, unlike our eight mil tape, where your emitter is 12 inches apart. This is on six inch spacings right here. Mm -hmm. So you've got an emitter here, six inch later. So would you want to plant every six inches? You could. If or you're planting you... something thick, like lettuces or something like that, or beets or radishes, you could do it, whatever. These will actually bleed together. I mean, no more, no more than that is apart. They'll actually wet in between there. Six inches apart. So this is, let me tell you how you're gonna figure out how much water this thing puts out. Mm -hmm. So each emitter puts out 0.5 gallons per emitter. Mm -hmm. We got them six inches apart. Six so inches what that apart. means is one gallon per foot per hour. Okay. Got it? <laughs> one gallon, one foot okay. per hour. All right. So what we're going to do on the end is we're going to use these good plugs. Now the good plugs are just a little bit different than those transfer bars. I said they wouldn't, but they are a little bit because they got a, a bigger end on yeah. that end right there. So on the ends, you simply just take the same size bar, a small end, small end, and stick it in, and that stops up the end. That plugs the end of your quarter inch drip line. I feel and that like is it. I could go do my. Uh, you could do yours. Anybody could do this. So there's one drawback to this situation, to this kit, and that is that this quarter inch line cannot be run more than thirty feet. 30 feet is its limit. So when you're rows, you cannot have any rows longer than 30 feet. If you do, you're not going to get consistent water. And that's the great thing about this right here over soaker hose is soaker hoses are not very consistent. But this drip tubing with these emitters in it is very, very consistent. And it puts out the same amount of water everywhere. But just remember, your limitations is 30, 30 feet. Can't run longer than that. It puts out one gallon an hour. One gallon. Per foot. Per foot. Per hour. hour. So let's figure out how, how you would know how much of this tubing you could run. So most people out there, the average water, I'm water speaking, and I say average, I know I'm getting in trouble here because everything's different, but let's say the average is five gallons per minute. Mm -hmm. So if you got a water speaker and you, and you take a five gallon bucket and you open it up and you're putting out five gallons per minute, five times 60, which is 60 minutes, is what? What's five times 60? You're tough on math. <laughs> 36, honey. Nope. Five times 60. What's five times 30. 30. Put your zero on there. You, you shouldn't do this to me <laughs> on TV. Put your zero on there and you come up with 300. Okay. So 300 is the amount of tubing that you could run if you've got five gallons per feet. Per minute? Five gallons. <laughs> That's the amount of water you would have to supply this tubing right here would be 300 feet. I need a diagram. You need a diagram. I need a diagram. So I'm the a average person. The average person, the average person is going to have five gallons per minute. That's what I'm trying to tell you is you have enough water, the average person does, to run 300 feet, which would be 10, 30 foot rows, or could be. So the maximum amount you could probably run off this system here without busting up to another zone is 10 30 foot rows. And that's a decent sized garden. Wouldn't you say? That's more mm -hmm. garden than you normally do. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So there it is. You get in this kit here, you get one 30 foot mainline tubing, you get one filter regulator combo, and you get 200 foot, you're going to have some of this left over, but you get 200 foot of this PEP line. We call it the mini uh, drip line. You get 200 foot there. That way you could do as much as 200 foot with this kit. Now, if you needed to do more than that, we have these on the website and you could buy these extras. With this kit here, you could do 10 rows, 20 foot long. You get a hole punch. Get a hole punch and you get fittings such as the transfer barbs, and good, good plug. plug. And stakes. And stakes. I forgot about those. 
So we got these two different stakes we like to use in there. I like to use these right here for my mainline tube and you put it out there and you can stake this into the soil so it stays, stays nice and straight for you. Then we have this right here, which is the small little tubing stakes. So you could stake these periodically through there to keep them nice and straight. All right. And of course you got instructions in that and we got, uh, we're going to be doing some videos on it as well. And how much is this? Glad you asked. That right there is $89.99. So $89.99 allows somebody to get into drip irrigation business. There again, let's go over it one more time. Your maximum amount of garden you could cover with this drip irrigation system is 10 rows, 20 foot long. Or you could do five rows. 10 foot long. No, you couldn't do five. You could do five times. You could do five rows, 15, 30 foot long. What's five times 30? It's 150. You could do five rows, uh, 30 foot long. You got 200 feet of this, so you can kind of do anything you want to there. The most rows you could put out, if you did on 36 inches, would be 10 rows, 20 foot long. And then you're gonna have a no, you wouldn't have any of this left over. That use every bit of it. All right, we got that. Small irrigation kit. 89.99. On our website. Wow. Yep. You got that? I got it. You think you could put that in? I could. Yep. Honestly, I think I could. you could too. All this right. is the first time I've seen it. Yeah, and the reason I want to do that is to, is to let you kind of understood it. So, uh, understood so, I can answer the so you can answer the questions. All right, so let's move it out of the way. The other system that we have introduced is going to be a raised bed drip system, and it's going to be similar to this right here, but not exactly. Mm -hmm. Can you show the picture? Yep, show the picture here. All right, now also, we want to show you a little map there. And this is a sample map of what you could do with this system right here. And you see there, you could do eight, four by eight, which is a normal raised bed, four, excuse me, eight, four by eight beds. They're gonna get all that in with this right here. All right. So with a raised kid bit, you get the same thing. You get 30 foot of the mainline tuber. Okay. Now, we can take this off right here. Let's just pull these out. Because we can use this same thing there. And we're going to use this. And which one we're going to use for the time being. All right. So you've got your mainline tubing, you got the same filter regulator combo with it, which, whoop, whoop, <laughs> hit me. which is the 20 psi. But what's different here is you would run this down as what we'd call your trunk line, your main line, and you have a product inside of this that you don't have with the small irrigation system, which is the plain quarter inch tubing. Now, this quarter inch tubing right here does not have any. Emitters in it. This is just plain tubing. But it hooks right into those transfer barbs like you would use on the other one. So you would punch those transfer barbs in there. Like that right there. And then you could run. That's the wrong one. Let me make sure I get the right one here. This one's got a lot more fittings in it. All right, here we go. Mm -hmm. You would run this quarter inch tube over to your raised bed and you would use this elbow right here. Push in there. This is a bar fitting again. Pushes right in there. And you could go up your raised bed and you would cut your tube in however, far, however high your raised bed is. You put you another one of those elbows in there. You go into your raised bed so this would be on the ground? This, this would be on the ground. This would be on the ground. This would go up to your raised bed. Yep. So like if this was your raised bed. Uh, well, it would go up. You can cut us another piece of tube. You want to do that? that will that help you some? Maybe. All right. Just another elbow on that. we're going to do this right here. Now you can bury this or you can lay it on top of the ground. It doesn't matter. 
And I tell you what, when I was working with this right here to start with, I put in some new raised beds in my garden. And what I did, instead of coming on the outside of the raised bed, I just dug up and I put them in the inside of the raised bed and I come up that way. I kind of like that a little bit better. Because so like if that was your raised bed? Yeah, you would come up and you would be inside your raised bed right there like that. Okay. Boom. Ba-boom. Ba-boom. Now what's great about this system is, is that you have these little cutoff valves for each bed. Oh. Isn't that neat? So would you have one of these per raised bed or two? One of these per raised bed and you're going to run over Then you would cut you another little piece. It's kind of like putting a little puzzle together. So in real life, these would be a lot longer. These would be a lot longer, but we're going to put it all together. All right. In case y'all don't know what that is, that's not Sheila's stomach growling. That's Maggie back here growling. She's sitting down back here. She's wanting somebody, she's wanting somebody to pet her. All right. So you run into your raised bed just like that right there. Cut you another small piece. And there we have T's. When I was coming up working on this system right here, I that's not a T. There they are. When I was that's not a either. It was here somewhere. There they are. I did several different testing with different products. I started off using these little small sprinklers, these little micro sprinklers. I tested that to start with, but the reason I didn't like that is because they overspray. Mm -hmm. You could never set them so that they sprayed right inside your bed. And plus, we was getting water on the foliage. We don't like to do that. And plus, they were sticking up and getting broke off. That's the reason we backed up and went with this drip system right here that does just like all our other systems. Okay, you get the point now? I get the point. Then you put... Oh. Then you cut some more. We're doing a little mini... Another elbow? Another elbow. We've got plenty of elbows in this kit right here. A lot of elbows. A lot of elbows. So you'll put that I feel on. like I'm doing... Uh, what's that stuff? Legos. Legos. <laughs> All right. So you would come off this way just like you do with that way. And you could come off there. And, and then when you would shoot... Now you would put your tubing on there. You got some already cut. Yes, I do. With the goof plugs already on. All right, there we go. Bye. Go ahead and put one on that side. So we get the full effect here. All right, so I need more tubing right here. And another elbow. I got this down pat now. Here we go. Here we go, here we go. I hope everybody can see this. All right, so there it is. And then you would pin this down. Well, you get pins in there, just like the other system where you can pin these down, keep them in place. Yeah, kind of move it around so that. One of those longer those, but hope you get the idea how you run up, you run that in there. I think these cutoff yeah, valves are just great because, and you could move that cutoff valve to anywhere you wanted to, but I like to put it in there for the whole bed. But think about it, you ain't got to water all your beds at one time. You can water each bed because you may not plant all your beds at one time. When are you going to put this in mine? Shortly. 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 All right, so there we have it, folks. I want to help you do it when you do it. Yeah. I think that'd be cool. Get back and have a race because I've had this in my beds up there for a while. This is what I've been... Uh, I've been experimenting with my beds and it works really, really good. I grew some awesome broccoli and cabbage and some flowers with it. But uh, mm -hmm. when you get ready to work your beds up, you just simply pull your pins up, take this, lay it out of the way, work your beds, and then put it back. All right. And what's neat about this drip irrigation system is it lasts you for years, years and years and years. And if everybody can see, let's put the product page back up so everybody can see what you get in there. You get, get my stuff back out here. You get two rolls of the drip line there. You get a roll of the, oh, do you get two rolls of this? 
Yep, you get two rolls of the solid line, and then you get a 30 foot long roll of mainline TV with your filter regulator combo, and all kind of elbows, a bunch of elbows where you can go up in those raised beds there. You get hole punch. Hole punch. You get those um, cutoff valves, pins. Filter regulator combo. Oh, yeah, you get the pins here. So you get all that right there for $99.99. I think I'm right on the front of that. How much? I think it's $99.99. Yep. Yep, $99.99. What a bargain. So you save a good bit of money by buying this as a kit than you do buying it, you know, all apart. Now here's the great thing, folks. Say your system is a little bit different than what we showed on our mount there. All these components that we have in both of these kits, you can buy individually on our website. So if you need something a little bit more, you can buy them and we'll get them to you. You need a little more mainline tubing, you can get larger roll of mainline tubing. You can get more of this, more each of the fittings that you need or whatever. How about that? Exciting, exciting. exciting. Everybody's gonna have drip irrigation this year. Yeah. No excuse for you not having drip irrigation anymore. You got raised beds, we got you covered. You got containers, we got a container garden kit. You got a bigger garden, we got you covered. You got fruit trees, we got you covered on drip irrigation. And then you got a small garden, we got you covered. Ba-boom. Ba-boom. All right. Thank you, sir. All right. So whose garden highlight are we gonna highlight this week? Garden spotlight this week was sent in by Moses Philpot. Philpot? Philpot. Fort Myers, Florida, Zone wow. 10. Hey, look at some of the beautiful pictures here. Lettuce. He has lettuce. Bok choy. Bok choy. Cabbage. Collards. Is this collards? That's a rough leaf collard if it is. Yeah. Yep. Mustard. And more lettuce. More lettuce. Then there was one picture with it all together. Did you lose that one? I thought I probably did. Right there. There it is. Yeah, with and, some broccoli. and broccoli, yeah. Thank you, Moses. And if you'll send us in your garden pictures to um, on our website, Hoss University, there's a link on there to submit your garden photos. Yep, thank you, Moses. You uh, you getting dirty down in South Florida. Down there, they can grow pretty much year round, except for the summertime in July and August is when they really struggle. I talked to somebody on the phone the other day and we talked about gardening in South Florida. They garden fine all during the winter time. It's, it's too hot months out of the year. Where people up north, January, February just, can't do it. It's just the opposite down there. So, all right, old goat. Old goat. So, folks, if you found the old goat on the setting where it's a figurine, we try to move it around. It hides itself every week. If you find it located, put in the comments below where you found the old goat, and we draw every week for a prize from the week before. And the winner this week is Jimmy Payne. Jimmy found the old goat last week. And uh, Tom Matthews finally found the old goat as well. Well, yeah, he did. Tom finally found it. Tom struggled on the old goat <laughs> there for a while, but he found it. He found it. Jimmy, if you'll send us your shipping information to CustServe at HossTools.com, we'll get you a great prize in the mail. All right, that's it. That's it. So, folks, we got seeds coming in. If you're not signed up for our email newsletter, go sign up for that because Carrie sends out these notifications. We get these fresh batches of seeds in, keep you updated on what's going on with new products and new seeds. Yeah, everybody's calling about bean seeds. Don't give up. No, beans and peas haven't come in yet. Now, we're supposed to be getting an update any day now, but they're always late. Had a guy call this morning wanting zippers. I said, zipper peas is going to be a little bit. And one thing about it is if you wait and get fresh seeds, you're going to be in a little bit of shape because peas and bean seeds don't store that well. And uh, you kind of want to make sure you get fresh seeds there. And we'll have them in the next six weeks, I hope, in time for you to plant. Yeah, so if our website says out of stock, that doesn't mean out of stock for the year. Nope, that means we're waiting on fresh seeds. Temporarily out of mm -hmm. stock. And we got Seminole corn in. <gasps> yesterday yeah. we've been waiting on that a while they're packing it back there right now so hopefully we'll have some seminole corn seed on the website soon very soon so a lot of exciting stuff people's getting all 
ready to plant and I am too. It's a little early yet, but we're still getting ready. Yeah. Oh, one more thing. Ferment in February starts next week. Um, it was all, she was on our live, Anna from the Ferment at Homestead, um, Sunday night. And if you want to go back and watch that, the very first part of it, she tells you all about the fermenting February. Mm -hmm. Great gal, man. She's full of a lot of information. Check a lot out. of energy. Yeah, a lot of energy. A lot more than what I got. <laughs> Uh, but what's her what? Her YouTube channel? Fermented Homestead. Fermented Homestead, yep. Yeah. Check Anna out there. Thank you for joining us, folks. Hope we explained this a little bit to you. Hope we didn't confuse you. We got some videos coming out on them in the near future. So it's time for you to get off that couch and get out there and get dirty. Thank you.